Hey everyone, welcome to Adventures in Everyday Cooking, where every day can be an adventure in your kitchen. My name is Heather, and today we're doing rotisserie pork. Now, if you've been on this channel for a little while, you'll know about a year and a half ago, I did rotisserie pork, but I did it in the basket of the deluxe air fryer. Now, some of you guys don't have a deluxe air fryer, and I get that, I get that. So I thought that I would update this recipe and use the rotisserie rod assembly that comes with every air fryer that has a rotisserie function. Um, some of the comments that I've gotten recently is that people have put their food on this and it is not turning um, with the rotisserie function. So I thought I would diagnose some of those problems as well, um, and we would just have fun doing a rotisserie pork because it's a great way to do pork and it's no fuss. We're gonna use two ingredients and it's gonna be done and it's gonna be fantastic. And you can use it for literally anything and we're gonna use it for pork sliders for Super Bowl. So are you ready for this adventure? Let's go. All right, you guys, this is a super simple recipe of sorts. Mainly, I'm just gonna show you the method. Um, the, the only two things we're gonna use is some kind of oil. I'm gonna use canola. You could use olive, butter, you know, whatever. Um, and then some kind of seasoning. Today, I'm gonna use the rotisserie seasoning from Pampered Chef, um, but you could use any rub that you want, your homemade rub, really literally anything, but I just thought I'd use the rotisserie seasoning because it's gonna be delicious. Um, so first of all, let's go over our meat. So when you are dealing with a chicken, usually the chicken is kind of, you know, its legs are out and it's kind of flappy and you definitely want to have kitchen twine so that you can tie up your chicken so it doesn't flop all over in your air fryer. But did you know you also need to tie up your pork roasts? So. The first thing that we're gonna do though is we are gonna get it oiled and um, get the seasoning on before we tie it up. So all I'm gonna do is I am going to drench my pork roast here in my carrier oil. All right, and once you have it good and massaged, um, I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands so that the next time I touch this or touch something else, I don't get everything all over the place. You know, like cross-contamination. And I'm gonna treat this like a rub. So I'm going to sprinkle it everywhere on the front and the back of my meat here. And the rotisserie seasoning from Pampered Chef is gluten-free for those of you who ask. And it has a fantastic flavor. All right, now we are gonna cut some pieces of twine. Um, kitchen twine is something that you can buy at most grocery stores or super centers. And I always have this on hand because you never know what you're gonna need it for. Um, rotisserie is definitely one of those things. So usually I like to do about a yard of kitchen twine um, for each of my wraps. And that's mainly because I don't like running out. There's nothing more annoying then cutting a short piece of twine and realizing that you didn't cut enough and then having to go wash your hands and come back to your twine ball because you definitely don't want to get any raw meat on your twine ball because that is stored in your, I mean, I don't know where you store it, but I store it in my drawer with all my utensils. And so I definitely don't want raw meat on that. All right, so we have our twine here and we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Now, the reason it's important to wrap it up is because when you stick your rod through it um, and it starts to turn, it will flop around, thus causing it to kind of dislodge itself and then it may not turn anymore. So what we're going to do is we're gonna find the, the part that I can flop over. So if you look at this roast, you have a piece of it kind of sticking out here because the butcher you know, took the pieces he wanted off and then he's like, okay, this is the rest, this is the roast. So I'm going to kind of tuck it in like this and I'm gonna wrap it as such. So I think that's the best way to wrap. Yep, that is the best way. So I'm gonna take my first piece of twine, I'm gonna go underneath it and I am just going to tie as tight as you can, like literally as tight as your little hands can tie. And then we're gonna twist once and we're gonna tie again. You don't want to tie it again, you know, going the same direction because it tends to slip a little bit. And then, but don't, don't trim these off yet. And did you see, even though I had a whole yard, that's all that's left over from that. So that is a good thing to remember. 
Okay, now that our roast is all tied up, you can do two things. You can either tie it again on the other side with the strings that are hanging off. So I'll tie this one. If you don't have enough to tie because your roast is much bigger, just cut them off. Just don't cut them too short. But you don't want them long because as it cooks, this has the potential to like, you know, flop around and get a little crusty. So we're gonna actually cut it to just about half an inch. So anything that's left over, we're gonna cut to about half an inch. All right, that looks great. Okay, before I wash again, we're gonna install this rod. Now, this is the part where some people are like, this is way too much work, which is why some people do it in the basket. But most of you, if you're not a pampered chef, you know, you don't have a basket. You don't know that this roast will work fabulously in the basket. So instead, we're gonna use the rod and we're gonna have fun doing it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to find an area that's kind of, doesn't have that uh, silver skin or that fatty layer. And we're gonna try to jam this rod all the way through. So we're gonna start here and we're gonna go push and push and look at that. It is about to come right through the other side. See that? So not super hard. Now comes the part where I think that a lot of people are, um, I don't wanna say failing because it's not a fail. It's just something you're not, uh, not aware of. Um, these little forks that come with the rotisserie rod are actually designed to help you stabilize your meat. So let's start on this side over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to get that installed. So we're gonna push it through the rod like this and we are going to tighten it as far over as we can for the moment. And there's a good reason for that because when we do the other side, we want to be able to push the meat as hard as possible into itself. So let's turn this direction. And if you look at these forks, let me see if you can see it. There we go. If you look at these forks, ideally I want to shove them as far into this meat as I can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna literally push until I can push no more. So see that? It's pushed, jammed right down in there. Now, one thing that I want you to see is that look how far the fork is. The fork's down in there, but look how far my rotisserie is on this side and where the meat is. If I was to install the meat at this point, it would hit the side and thus becoming dislodged and probably just sit there and rotate because it wouldn't have enough catch. So what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm going to loosen my pin and we're going to slide the rod out so that this little nub right here, see that this, there's a couple nubs, this nub clears the meat. And then I'm gonna twist it tight again. And there we have it. So now, this side will clear the machine very easily because this is the side that goes into the machine. All right, and the top, we're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna put on our fork and we are going to push it all the way down, all the way in. Now, because the meat is so far this way, do you see that? I am actually going to probably adjust it just a little bit to make it so that it's in the middle of the rotisserie instead of off to one side. Do you see that? There's more on one side than the other. So I'm gonna leave this one like not, not tightened and I'm gonna loosen this one just a little bit and then we're gonna slide our guy into the middle. See that? So now we are right in the middle. So now let's go ahead and tighten this one. And then we will tighten this guy over here. There you go. There it is, all ready to go. Okay, let me go ahead and get washed and then we will get it installed into the machine. So problem one with your food not rotating is that those forks might not be jammed into your meat strong enough. Problem two, is possibly you're not getting it into the right location in the rotisserie. It can feel like it's in there, but if you don't have the rod um, put into the star bit exactly snugly, um, 
it will look like, I mean, it stays up there just fine, but it will not rotate. So let's go over that as well. So here we have the inside of our air fryer. And on this side, you can see that it has a little hook where we're at. That's not the side that rotates. That's actually the side that holds the side that rotates. Let's turn it this way so that you can see that little star bit. Can you see it in there? So when we install our pork, we want to make sure, first of all, that it is in that star area. So I'm gonna leave the air fryer turned like this so that you can see it. And then we are gonna install this pork using our lifter here. So then what we're gonna do is we are gonna take that the end and we're going to fit it right into that star area. So some people would stop there. So I don't know if you can see that, but as you can see, it's sitting up just fine. And if I turn it on, that thing will rotate, but it will not rotate my food. So you need to really, and honest to goodness, I use my hands all the time because this, you can't feel it kind of snugly fit in there. So I'm gonna take my clean hands that I just cleaned and I am going to grab my roast and I'm going to move it side to side until it is for sure into that hole. As you might be able to see in there, it is firmly in the star bit and I'll know that by moving it back and forth and it doesn't move. On the other side, it is firmly nestled in the side over there in the first slot, not the second slot. So that's important as well. So we're ready to go. Okay, so now we have problem number three as to why your rotisserie might not be turning. You're, it might not be turning because you're using the custom button and forgetting to turn to hit the rotate button. So when you use custom, and say you want to rotisserie your thing on 350 instead of the preset, if you go to rotisserie, the preset is 400. Now, if your recipe that you're using says to rotisserie on 300, you would obviously come over here to custom, hit your custom button, set it for whatever time that you're going to do. So we'll say, you know, the 45 minutes, then you'll set it for the temperature, which you wanted it at 350. And then when you hit go, we think in our minds, well, the rotisserie is installed, so it should just know that the rotisserie is in there. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Once you hit go, you need to hit the rotate button. So I don't know if you, yeah, you can see it rotating in there. There's a little bit of a glare. <laughs> Can't really see it because the lights are on it, but it is definitely rotating in there. If I was to turn the rotate off, the meat stops. So there are some times, and I am guilty of it, that I will put something in for a different amount of time and totally forget to hit the rotate button until like five minutes through the cooking. So that could be your problem number three. So let's get this actually ready to go. So I'm gonna turn this to rotisserie and I'm actually going to set it. It's a four pound roast-ish and we're actually going to set it for 45 minutes. and. I'm gonna check the temperature about the 20 minute mark and see what I think, but it should be done in about 45 minutes. So that's it. That, those are the things that I have noticed for me that have caused this machine not to be everything I wanted it to be as a rotisserie. Um, the not tying up, the not getting the tines pushed in hard enough, the not remembering to push rotate, Oh my word, that is so annoying. The fourth thing that I feel like I need to mention, naturally when food cooks, it shrinks a little. And so if those tines are not pushed in really hard, it will actually remove itself from the tines and then your food's not spinning anymore. It's just kind of sitting there and the top is getting charred. So maybe one of those things are what has caused yours to not work. I hope it was one of them and that you'll have success the next time. So I will see you back here in about 45 minutes to show you the results of this rotisserie pork. And you're gonna be so surprised. It's freaking amazing. All right, see you back here. Okay, the time has ended and this took about 65 minutes in total. I attempted about 45 minutes and it was still a little low and I attempted again about two minutes ago 
and it is right at temperature. So are you ready to see this beautiful rotisserie roast coming out of here? You're not gonna believe it. Look, can you already see it? Fantastic. Check out that roast. Can you believe that that came out of something here at home? When I first did this, I can't believe. I, it is fascinating to me that we can now get restaurant quality food in our air fryers, because this is fantastic. And all of that fat, I know I trimmed off a little bit of it, has crisped up like bacon. This is a phenomenal roast. So I'm gonna let it sit here for a couple minutes so that it can, like all of the juices cannot just run out, but I am gonna go ahead and cut off all of my rope. So we're gonna go ahead and untwist this and pull it off. And then we're gonna pull out our rod. There we go. All right, when you're confident that you have let it rest for as much time as you can handle, because, oh my goodness, I need to cut into this, it's time to cut it. Now, I made this roast so that I could make barbecue pork sliders for game day, um, but uh, I thought that I would cut some up and show you the results of the inside because I'm gonna shred it up, um, but if you just wanted it to be a pork roast for dinner or whatever, this is perfect just the way it is. All right, you ready for the cut? Let's cut the edge first. Oh man, look at all the juices still in that. Oh, it's amazing. If you have never used the rotisserie function to make rotisserie anything, I challenge you to do it. The meat that comes out of your own home rotisserie is fantastic. So, and so, so juicy. If you haven't invested in a meat thermometer yet, definitely get yourself a meat thermometer so that you can stick it in the middle of your meat and ensure that it's cooked through. But um, I have the instant read thermometer from Pampered Chef. It's really, really nice. Check out, isn't that amazing? Look at how juicy. Do you see the juices just coming out of that? It's totally awesome. Okay, let's taste it up. I've already started to shred it just a little. Oh, that is so, that is good. All of those, because it was rotisserie and it was kind of cooking all of its, in all of its own juices, that seasoning has really penetrated the meat and this tastes fantastic. I love all rotisserie meat, so it wasn't gonna be a long shot that this is so good, but it is, it's good. Okay. I should probably stop eating and talk. <laughs> hmm, hmm, hmm. Everything about rotisserie air frying is amazing. If you can pick up an air fryer with a rotisserie function, definitely check it out. If you have not tried it yet, oh man, I am encouraging you. It does not take, the, it's not that hard. And the meat that comes out of it is fantastic. I mean, can you imagine serving this on Sunday for Sunday dinner? like people would be like, wow, that looks fantastic because it does look fantastic. All right, you guys. Well, I hope that that video helped you if you've been having problems with your food spinning around or if you just needed some more encouragement to use your rotisserie function, let this be your encouragement. People ask me all of the time how often I use my air fryer. Uh, some, some weeks, it's every day because I use it for breakfast, I use it for lunch, and look at this, I'm using it for dinner, and I'm using it for game day. So, do you wanna see the game day recipe? Guess what? Next week, you're on. We are gonna show you a game day recipe, and it's gonna be fantastic. All right, you guys, if you enjoyed that video, you know what to do. It really does matter if you like this video, and totally subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Um, I do videos several times a week and I'm always looking for the next adventure. So if you have a question about air frying or grilling or anything, if I don't know the answer, that's where the adventure begins because I will go research it and then I'm gonna do it. And it's gonna be amazing because it's me and you. I feel like we have adventures together. So I really appreciate you tuning in 
and subscribing and liking and commenting. We'll see you next week for a game day treat. All right, you guys, bye.